I just, what's with the tightness of the shirt? I put a bit of weight. What's with the tightness? Good evening, all. Ah, now, it's becoming an item in itself each week. Bike fans, you didn't know, were bike fans. Uh, England cricketer Graeme Swan was last time out, OK, you remember? Uh, and now it's the polar opposite to him. Well known to TT fans, perhaps, but prodigy frontman uh, Keith Flint is a bike nut. And I'm delighted to say he's with us tonight. Keith Flint, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Come on, man, 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 I'm delighted you're here tonight. Yes. I'm delighted you gave you a hug oh. because um, you just tell him how big a fan. I'm a massive fan. So I've been to see you in concert and also when I was an athlete, yes. my song I would warm up to, Olympic final, world championships, everything, Firestarter. So I used to go out there and used to make me aggressive and, yeah. ready, and ready to race. So That's fantastic. For me, yeah. sitting next to Pretty Boy every week is quite nice, but this is huge. In fact, I've got... you. Talking about me. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to do this? Oh, do you want yeah, to do this? Jump in. I know we're live on... Uh, on. You know, just get a little... I'll get out of the way then. Yeah. Go photobomb it, photobomb it, Parrish, photobomb it. There we go, you have one. Fantastic. Good stuff. Let's talk about bikes and your love of bikes. Where, where yeah. does it come from? How big is it? Um, I think for me, the bike originally was freedom. You know, at 16, it was the first thing that I could jump on and exit the family home. You know, so, um, um, yeah, it, it represented a freedom for me. And then um, shortly after, I suppose, you know, passing my I passed my test on my 17th birthday, jumped straight on a bike that I'd got stashed at a, a, a lady's house that I rented a garage for four quid a week and um, the bike was hidden from, from yeah there. because I, I brought an old proddy for, uh, rd 400 off an, uh, an ex proddy racer and um, it crashed it and I, I rented a garage and rebuilt it and restored it and then once I passed my test I arrived back um, at, you're not at talking I've got, I've got to jump in there you're doing yourself an injustice here you're not just an all right rider you're decent aren't you we're talking Racing. I tell you what, it, it's kind of a bit like gunslinging. There's always someone faster and um, and and keener than you are. But um, this is on a track day. Where is this? Ol Olden Park, is it? Is um, I'm not sure actually. I love Olden. Yeah, it looks like Olden. That's Alton, yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, I love Olden. I, I, I uh, me and myself, uh, uh, sorry, me and Ben Neves, we uh, won our first. Uh, endurance race there on my birthday. So should we get Steve I'll to commentate on this? Steve Parrish, how's he looking yeah, on the bike? Oh, look at as he tips it in there, right knee out, and there. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> yeah. it. So quick, so quick. Perfect. I've uh, had Steve Parrish uh, <laughs> commentating on my. Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. My did you adventures. hide your bike from your mum and dad then, or something? You said. You yeah, I did. Dad. Yeah, well, I had two older brothers, and um, that's how I got into bikes. One was more into the sports bikes, and one was a, a proper. Grebo, you know, sort of GSX thousands right. and, and, and chops and stuff. And basically, I just wound up my brothers saying that I was going to get a. Do you remember the Honda 250 Super Dream? Yeah, you must have had a lot of money. That, that had, a, had a, a different name. It wasn't quite a Super Dream, I forget. It wasn't something called a Honda Bentley or something else? Was no, I think it was called a Wet Dream, wasn't it? Right. <laughs> yeah. um, it would have been if I'd have owned one. Is this what it's like well, in, that's in what a biker's old people's home? Is this scene actually what it's, what it's like? <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a little bit, but I, I suppose I, I, I wound up my brother saying, yeah, I really want this 250 Super Dream, and I had the RD400 at home. It was a little bit, and they were going, you can't get one of them, you've got to get something a bit more exciting. And, and uh, yeah, and my parents weren't really into the whole thing as such, so, yeah, I, I suppose I just enjoyed having something a little bit private and a little bit personal, which was also to do with my freedom. And my, fr and my freedom of expression. I Just suppose. a little tip, if you come back as a youth again, you can have a tractor's licence at 15 before you get a motorcycle, because I used to go to the youth club on a tractor. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. Not looking after tractors sure anymore, happened. though, is it? It's not tractors anymore no, for you, no. it's a proper race team. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Team traction yeah. control. You're very good, actually. You brought a bike in. And Steve, we did. you want to have a little wander over here? Come on here now, Keith. Yeah, because, we'll, uh, yeah. no, also, Steve, yeah, yes, you can indeed. Steve, Mer Steve Mercer, one of your riders with as well. Yeah. Um, your debut season in the British Supersport Championship. That's right, um, yeah. Also planning on taking on the great big old mountain over at the TT this year as well. But let's talk yeah. about the Supersport Series, all yes. kicked off a brand. Steve, good to have you. And congratulations, mm. awesome. well done. Um, you're on the Evo bike here. 
great weekend for you. Actually, this isn't the Evo, is it? This is, yeah, this one this is the Evo. Yeah. It's yeah. actually hard to tell the difference between the two. We'll talk mm. about that in just a moment. But let's talk about your debut with Keith's team. What is he like as a boss? Perfect. I mean, <laughs> what, what I see and what you see on the telly, like sort of dancing around and stuff. I mean, Keith, as a race team boss, is he's great. You know, he's perfect. He, we all work well together. We get on well. We're, we're mates sort of behind the race and we're, we're good mates. So, yeah, that no, works really, really well. It, um, obviously, I've seen Keith and I've seen the gigs and, you know, I've been to the gigs and it's almost two different people. You know, what you see on stage and what you see, see in the race paddock is a very focused, driven sort of individual who wants to, you know, mm. get to the front and win races. So clear this up for everyone at home. In the Super Sport class now, there's the Evo class as well, also mm. in the Superbike class. You podiumed in the Evo class. Yeah. What is it all about? Well, the Evo class is slightly different to the uh, Super Sport class, main class. Basically, there's, there's two classes in one. The Super Sport bike's been a lot more free on what you can do, like tuning engines and electronics and etc. Whereas the 600 is more of a super stock based bike with, you know, you've just got a, a ported head and a skim cylinder head and, and kit electronics. It's keep the cost down and obviously, you know, super sport's a real good class. They want to keep the class and just basically sort of get the grid going really. What would be the difference in, in cost then for an Evo bike, super sport? What, what would this retail at? Well, in comparison to our TT super bike, sort of a fraction of that really. I mean, so to go and buy that bike, build that bike and put it on the track with spares, etc. And, and get you going, probably about 20, 25,000, I would say. I mean, it's, it's cool looking, isn't it? I mean, I love the matte black. And is, that a, is that a bit of an idea, a bit of intimidation? It, um, it looks good. It, it's not, actually. It's just to sort of, like, um, maybe um, put a, you know, sort of bit of a new twist. We're a new team. We're not just sort of maybe following the, the, the usual um, sort of uh, livery that you might, and, uh, might put on a bike. And I, I, I suppose it's just... It's just, you know, um, just a, a bit of a personal yeah. spin on it. Are you going to blag the bikes for track days? 100%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it's yeah, all about, the, really. The best it? thing about being the governor yeah, is you, you like. can actually say, we need this here and I'm going to ride it. And you do see the disappointment. Um, but um, and the, it does go there. The black's not going to show the scratches as much either. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And if you take it to the TT, uh, there might be a few scratches on us. Is this, is this the livery we're going to see at the TT? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I mean, basically the TT is built around Steve. Steve raced the um, uh, endurance with the hot tracks um, last year and, and won it with Ben. And, um, you know, really, the, you know, off the back of that, we, we, we've built the whole sort of road... Um, campaign that we're on, so to speak, um, around Steve. Um, you know, he's a good jockey, and I've watched him year after year load up his van and go and do do it on his own, and 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 has done great things. And um, to have a, a a team that can take all the pressure of running the bike off of him, and just con and Steve can just concentrate on the. 37.7 miles of Miles the of lumps course. and bumps and lines and drains. They yeah. call the mountain course. Yeah. said that a few I mean, times. The, the thing is as well, you can't help but be really enthusiastic about the TT when you've got Steve around. And Steve, got... you, Steve knows it well and you're going to be competing in lots of classes, so I hope I'm talking to you a lot in the summer because I'll be over there with this man by your side. Yes. Great stuff. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for bringing no the bike worries. in. Wonderful Pleasure. stuff. Uh, these are super sport bikes, of course. And uh, There you go. Rossi's team gets his first win. Moto3, great race. One of the races, mm. uh, best races I've seen in a long time. Romano Fanati though, uh, very aggressive at the end there. A lot of controversy about that win. What was your read and what happened? Yeah, it, it, as I said when I was watching it here, uh, it's not a knitting competition. Motorcycle mm. racing is motorcycle racing. It is pretty tough out there. Uh, and if you start looking, he charges down the inside and as he comes around, he wants to get on the brakes, but he gets squeezed out in a little while. You'll see he just gets squeezed and he can't really put the brakes on at the time. And unfortunately, uh, in a second, here he goes. He, now he's getting squeezed at that point, so he's got to sort of stand the bike up. But he's looking for the same piece of track, obviously, and, and unfortunately, just bangs down the inside. And it, and it was really unfortunate for young Jack Miller, but let's face it, he's won the first two. A third's good enough for him for the championship. I know he's pretty cross about it all, but you just see there at that point there, he just does barge his way through there. But in fairness, Jack Miller had left a metre, and a metre in Motor 3, that's an invitation. Mm. Well, that's why we like this kind of racing. We like a bit yeah. of fairing bash. Yeah. Now, there was an investigation, Keith. It was Dr. Point. I didn't know that. But, yeah. Um, Fair or unfair? What um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm with Steve on this. I mean, racing is very much about racing. It's very gladiatorial, you know, and... You know, my brief and, and very humble experience in it is when you see that space, you have to take it. If you hesitate, you'll lose it. 
you know, and, and everything's very spon uh, spontaneous. Spon spontaneous. spontaneous. Indeed. Spontaneous. What's that? And, uh, yes, well done. But, uh, you know, and... Um, you know, and you see the space and you, you have to, you, you know, a lot of the great racers, once they're taken, they'll t retake. And that, that's the mentality. And, and you have to have that. And one point's not really a big penalty because he's allowed to have four. If you mm. get four, then you have to go to the back of the grid and start the next race. And if you get, I think it's eight, you have to go to the pit lane. And then ten, you get to mm. miss a race. But that, so one point's not so bad. At that stage, it looked like he was going to come in third, which was mm. like 16 points. Yeah. So he's actually was really quite, well, yeah, yeah. quite well out of it. Mm. Um, what are your thoughts on that last corner incident in that race? Uh, was it right? to penalise uh, Fanati. We want to hear from you. If you think he deserved the penalty, tweet us, hashtag penalty yes. If you disagree, hashtag penalty no. This is your show. We want you to get involved. We would love to hear from you. Right, boys, let's talk about Danny Kent. Right. The mm. British challenger in there. Your thoughts on his weekend? Well, he had pretty good. He qualified extremely well, right up there in the front. Got beaten up a little bit in the race, and then got beaten up properly when he came across the line. There, now that was mm. a massive accident. Mm. Poor lad, I felt for him because he just, as he came across the line, he got uh, really shoved out. But he's getting better and better. He's getting more used to it, and that's the point where he just got shoved out really wide. But fortunately, he was actually off the bike when he goes across the line. But as long as you're touching the bike, he's kind of laying on the side. Look here, that. and he just gets absolutely shoved out, pushes the bike away from him. But there's the line. Look, he's mm. just sliding across the track there had he not have been touching the point he wouldn't have got the finish he's been unlucky hasn't he he has been quite unlucky he's come back from motor 2 to motor 3 but realistically he knows I know and Keith knows coming back from the bigger class to the smaller class you've got to be right up the front this mm. is his year to perform really well because mm. he was motor 3 went to motor 2 and came back to motor 3 and he's on a really good bike I don't know if you've seen this bit there's a kind of a third eye incident but his teammate IO's work wasn't done there did you see what happened in the warm down lap? This is unbelievable. I didn't, no, no, Obviously, no. a bit of regret about what just happened. Not looking. Jack Miller, boof! Oh. Oh, <laughs> it's no, extraordinary. Have you that. seen that? No, I haven't. No. Yeah, the bike holds up well, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it takes yeah, yeah. the corner quite nicely indeed. No one has a clue what happened there. Wow. Bad stuff. Bad stuff. It was pretty horrendous. That could have been very, very nasty. It yeah, and it just been. shows that motorcycles, you often see them, they go a high side and then they stand up, but the gyroscopic effect of the wheels, the bike wants to go dead straight. That's mm. why it's hard to change direction mm. when you're in fast corners, because of the uh, gyroscopic very much. effect. Moto2, not as exciting. Tito Rabat, the man to beat at the moment. Uh, mm. uh, another win for him. Mm. Uh, not too exciting, mm. bit of a parade. But he's the man to beat, isn't he? He is the man to beat, and he's so dedicated with what he does. Um, I was down at her track days down in Almeria, and every single morning from 9 till 10 and 4 till 5, in the afternoons, Tito Ribat mm. gets on his spare super sp uh, motor two bike, goes out and goes round and round for an hour, works out what to do with worn tyres, worked out what to do when the bike's hot, all mm. those things, and it really is paying dividends this year. It's his championship to lose this year. Quick word on Sam Lowe's big off in qualifying, but yet yeah, comes back, puts a pretty good performance in race day. Amazing, good really good. Um, got up to ninth, I think, from 22nd. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Forced you know, his way through. That's that's amazing, and um, you know, it's great for British motorsport seeing him there. You know. Another, we were saying earlier on, another set of brothers, the Lowe's, the uh, Marcuses, and mm. who else? Aspargaros. Aspargaros. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, it's the, it's the Lowe's the... boys have got a big future in front mm. of them, in my opinion. They're, they're so competitive, whether it's golf, whether it's swimming, whether it's motorcycle racing, whatever. Mm. And that helps, I think. You know, they're a couple of good lads. I love yeah, that competition are. from brothers. It's great. Yeah, it's, it's brilliant. brilliant. You see a lot of it. And just you. Uh, let's talk about another third eye moment. So there you go. You've won the race. You're on the podium. You're holding your heart sleeve there and you're waiting to hear your anthem. And then this happens. <laughs> yes. Paul Fanati. Have you seen this? Yeah, I did, yeah. So he's waiting for the Italian national yeah. anthem. Yeah. Proud moment. Uh-oh. And it's not. <laughs> and it that did take them a long time. The Marseillaise, long. the French anthem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at yeah. that face. It is, it is really not nice, is it? It's taking the knife in and twisting it at that point. Yeah. And then we were there for ages, waiting and waiting, and finally they got it wound up. And there was a big, big smile on his face then. Oh, good on him, good on him. Nice moment there. It's really. hard enough getting him here in time for rehearsals yeah, from yeah, Ireland, yeah, let sure. alone... And who unpacks him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do live in a box. That's a massive job, though, isn't it? And what about the riders? That's a quick... Well, the pedal. riders in some ways have it reasonably easy, because if you're a factory rider, you get to fly business class, so they'll be fast asleep on the, you know, upstairs on the beds and everything else. Some of the, a lot of the riders won't be, I have to say. You know, there's, uh, there's only a small percentage, and the rest of them will be crammed in the back of the plane. But they will at least get a bit of a sleep and get a chance to relax, and, and maybe one or two days. <laughs> I just have to laugh. What are you Keith, laughing at? Well, Keith's here thinking, what, well, I could be in Germany, do four cases of Stella, be in London, Edinburgh the next night, on tour, Absolutely. no problem. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, to be quite honest, it's very similar. I often say the same thing. Um, the riders are, you know, the performers, but it takes a big team to get them there. You know, and without the infrastructure, without it running really tight and really slick, they wouldn't be able to do their, their thing. And 
basically a race circuit is a is a car park you know yeah. six days of the week and the same as glastonbury is in yeah. some respects we go there set up do our thing and off you go and off we go do you know what mate yeah, it's, a, do thing, it's a privilege it? to have you here and we've got the track there I don't know how tired you might be from your, from your travels, but hop, hop on the bike. We want to see a lap of Jerez. Oh, we want to leg over. So this is where we're off to next. Jerez. Right. Jerez. On Sunday. Okay. Do you want to talk about the track going around here? Okay. Okay. Breaking right. gears. Okay. I don't want to lean yet. <laughs> so, up to the first corner. I'm not supposed to be leaning this far, so I'm going to stop. This is the first corner. Remember, this is where Casey Stoner took Valentino Rossi out as he went into that corner. Turn one, first gear, quickly up to second, and then back down to first gear for this long, long right all the way through here. I'm right, lent over, and then you shift two gears. You go first, second, third, quickly for the left here, and then long left here, another left here, third gear all the way through here. The bike is spinning a lot, you stand it up a bit more, and then up to this really tricky corner up here on the right here, it's a double apex. There's the first one there, you can see, let the bike drift out a little bit, and then back you come to that final apex there. Very, very important to get that, and I'm not supposed to be leaning at this point because I'm going down the straight. <laughs> Fastest straight we've got here, and we're braking hard on the brakes, those big carbon brakes are braking. You can see back to second gear around this corner, here. another long, long one, and as you come out of here, you'll quickly grab a gear before you get the left here. There it is, third gear. Through this one here is where Loris Caparossi had a big crash through there. Another left, a short straight behind the pits here, another left here. They get the bike spinning up a lot. I stayed lent over because I couldn't get the bike to stand up. <laughs> anyway, we're coming around here, third gear, and then we're standing up. Okay, into the right here, and then we've got the right here, second gear corner, double apex again. There's the first one. Let it drift out, right to the curb on the left. How's Back the in for the right. Steve? And then I'm going to stand it up here, short straight as we go, and I'm going the wrong way now. But we've got another right, really fast right through here, and it's very important to get this one right, fourth gear, and then another right coming up here, right there. Now and then remember this last year into this corner. This was where Mark Marquez slammed it down the inside of Jorge Lorenzo, dived up the inside and got the win, and it was his first win of the season. And how about that? Wow! <laughs> A British champion just taking the step up and doing quite well from the off. Yeah, really good. He had an unfortunate start to the year, but I bet Paul Denning's mm. pretty happy with Crescent for that. Yeah, too. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I was really chuffed to see that. I mean, the boys, you know, have done a sterling job in, you know, in MotoGP and, uh, you know, British Superbike. Now they're in, in Worlds, you know, and, uh, you know, it's really good to see a strong, passionate team like that do so well. Uh, awful conditions, particularly for oh. the second race. Really, really bad. Um, I mean, absolutely pouring down. Very dangerous for them. Yeah, it's interesting, can... actually, isn't it, to see... We often see riders, particularly at the TT, Steve, having big meetings about conditions. But here, it was simple as, arm mm. going up, we're not racing after two laps. Yeah, That's sure. it. Uh, and the right decision from race control, they have to look at the situation and, and understand what's going on. You can see bikes getting skittled off everywhere. But after a while, fortunately, it did dry up and they managed to, to get it out and away. But the good news is, of Aston, it's a really safe circuit. Uh, Eugene Laverty had a nightmare week. Weekend. Obviously, two crashes. Two out. crashes. Yeah, yeah. How do you how do you pick yourself up after a weekend like that? It's got to be hard work. How would you talk to your your riders now? You're a team manager when something like that happens. Well, I, I mean, we, we did have a very similar uh, incident this this weekend because you know sat, uh, Sunday was was horrific. You know, it, all the all the top boys went out in the safety cars. They had a look round. They spoke about the circuit, and you know they're the lads that have to go out there. And um, we, you know, we sat down, we spoke about it, and we're, we're in a championship, you know. And um, we, you know, it's all about points. It's about the championship. It's not about the race. So we, we did have to talk about uh, getting out. And you know, from as I say, from my my race experience, you know, when it's when the conditions are like that, you're, you're fighting the demons. You know, you're trying to you know, fight with logic and passion, you know, and um, we had to put ourselves out there and we had to get points, otherwise we're not in the championship and that's how you win them. And it can actually, if, you know, as long as it's not too wet, it can mm. be fun. A lot of riders do enjoy riding in the rain and stuff like that. And in I fairness, enjoyed the wet. Yeah, I didn't mind it at mm. all, but in fairness, if you didn't race in the rain in, you know, in Europe, you'd never go racing half the mm. time, would you? So it has to happen. It's just as long as the conditions are acceptable. Mm. And before we hand over to you and one of his mates, we should mention that Shane Byrne did the double in the BSB round of the weekend, mm -hmm. which was great. Stuff, good old shaky burn you. Irish mate, uh, quite, he's got a bit of a, uh, a secret tattoo uh -huh. in, a, in a very private place. Craig? <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the names of all the GP circuits. I yeah. know. Mm. Big letters. Yeah, yes. way down. Oh, Bruno, anyway. <laughs> Shall we I move know. on? <laughs> you got the same. <laughs> Nature's been kind, hasn't it, Keith? Yeah. Uh, right. Let's catch up with tonight's Twitter poll. Uh, we are asking you, do you think it was right to penalise Romano Fanati in the Moto3 race on Sunday? A bit of a nudge in the penultimate turn. This is your thoughts on it so far. 90% say no. 
It wasn't fair. That's fantastic. You like a bit of fairing, grinding, good old-fashioned racing, marvellous stuff. In a moment, though, Keith Flint will be taking on the Lean Machine Challenge. You ready for that, Keith? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. If I can give you some tips. Yes. <laughs> don't, don't listen to them. OK, perfect. Thank you. Listen, it is time for my favourite part of the show. Craig, you love it too. I won't announce that you broke it in rehearsals, but it's the lean <laughs> machine. It's time for the challenge. Yeah, but maybe I misjudged the weight a little bit. It's all very simple, really, although quite difficult to do. When you look at the pros in action, the way they corner, they get right over, they heel the bike right over, get their knee down, they just drift the bike gently around a corner. A wonderful, wonderful sight. And this bike essentially replicates that. You can get your knee right down all the way over and then flip the bike back over. So we've set up this challenge. Steve couldn't. Well, St he couldn't there. He might be able to do now. He's got his race head on now, wrong okay? for me. Because, guys, we're giving them 30 seconds to try and get their knee down and back over and knee down on the other side, just like the riders would do in a race, except a bit quicker and a bit more stressful for you because it's up against the clock. No Keith, problem. you're up first. Jump Perfect. on the bike, OK? Knee all the way down. Oh, Let me I'm, take this. Yeah, I'm taking this. And no pressure, though. I did tell you you're like one of my big heroes, yeah? Yeah. So Have you no guys pressure. done it? I can't let you. Um, who, uh, who's jet. familiar with eBay? There you go. Quick 200 quid for you. Marvellous. <laughs> right. Rider ready? Rider ready. Rider ready. On 30 seconds on the clock. Three, two, one, go! Go on, keep going. Oh, 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 use the throttle. Get the throttle and get back up. I'll get over, I'll get over. Hang on. Uh, uh, bring him, bring him, bring him. There we go. That's it. Come on. Oh. Ah. Full throttle. Come yeah. on. Yeah. 15 seconds to go. Full throttle. Is this fair? Full throttle. We'll get the same treatment. There we go. We're off. Come on. Here we go. Jump on the back. Come on! Come on! Come on! Oh. 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 Well, we weren't announced quite yet, but you did. Hard work, yeah, baby. Yeah, but you hard work, yeah. Well, I'm glad I'm the governor. I don't, I don't want him Steve. touching my bum. <laughs> same weight, same weight, just about? Oh, about the same, I'd have said, yeah, yeah. Oh, you've had a little practice, you're familiar with it, A yeah? tiny one, OK, okay. but I want a bit of shoving and pushing. Yeah, we'll right? help you. OK, right. Rider ready. Okay. Yeah, rider ready. 30 seconds on the clock. Three, two, one, go! Yeah. Come on! Don't help him, mate. He's a you pro. Help He's him. a pro. Come on, Parrish. Come on. Come on, Parrish. Come on, you got ah, seconds come on, to go. Parrish. Come on, Come on. 15 seconds well. to go, Steve. Well. Come on. How are we going? How are we doing? Ah, oh, no, it's broken. It's broken. Yeah, Steve. I'm fat up. Come on. Yeah, it's broken again. No, honestly, it's broken. It's broken. Oh, I'm not getting up. No. It's it's broken, it's broken. Okay. You ready? One, oh. There we there go. go. Thank you very oh, much. Well, you oh, marvellous. How did I do? <laughs> Unfortunately oh. for you, I think, Steve, we might have a replay. Oh, should I'm we not just sure say if you want to see it. Some odd moments, OK? Oh. Little have odd moments. Let's have a little look at oh. this. There we are. Oh, that's, oh, that's Keith. Keith. <laughs> oh! At least I didn't fall off. No. <laughs> oh. You're both getting a bit nice. of help there, aren't you? You see, oh. look, look, look. The throttle's gone. The throttle's gone. The petrol. No, anyway, the suspension was wrong, front forks weren't right, <laughs> gearing was wrong, lost a cylinder, I don't and know the front tyre learned. was too hard. I don't know what we've learned from that, but oh, let's have a little look at perfect. the lead. Should we have a look at the leaderboard? Yeah. Here we go, there's a... Oh! 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 Yeah. Steve, I got beaten by a well cricketer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. Oh, oh no. no right, well, do you well, know well, what? Well, I'm good well, at cricket. Well, Here is the results from the poll earlier. We were asking you, was it right for Romano Fanati to be penalised as he did that crazy last manoeuvre. We all thought it was good, actually. Here's the results. 91 has gone up by 1% since no, the last good, break. 91%, so you all agree. That was good yeah. racing. It's all yeah. fair and lovely, yeah. isn't it? I like the kind of racing you like. Now, don't forget to join us for live coverage of round four from Jerez in Spain, starting Friday the 2nd of May from 8 a.m. on BT Sport 2. All live and exclusive. Coming up next on BT Sport, it is... Oh, UFC oh, Beyond oh, the Octagon. <laughs> <laughs> My God, his undies. It's you know a legend. I am getting <laughs> witchy, but I'm still going to say thank you to our amazing guests. Thank you very much. Oh, there's something wrong with it. Oh, no.